the nasty bit out of the way. Uh, you see, uh, I used to fly with All Nippon Airways a lot. Um, over ten, 10 years ago, I was flying with them to go to Japan and I couldn't fault them. They were brilliant. Um, I booked through uh, a travel agent and uh, I t always told them I've got a brain tumour but my brain surgeon says I'm fit to travel and I've even got a letter to say that everything's okay and they never had a problem. Uh, so uh, uh, I, I booked my ticket and um, yeah and I'd be able to go off to Japan. Then uh, one day uh, I uh, went and um, I it was December and I wrote to them and said that, right, I've, um, I'm thinking about going to Japan, if you've got any problems, please get in touch with me, blah, 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 blah. And uh, I went to the travel agent and I bought my ticket and literally within an hour, I had a call from the travel agent saying that uh, one of their European executives got in touch with me to say that they're not letting me on the plane unless uh, my brain surgeon signed their insurance documents to basically just to cover their ass and uh i mean uh, th this is one of the best pediatric pe pediatric neurologists in england and i had to bother him because i wanted to go on holiday it was a nightmare i had to beg beg him to sign the documents he he by the way he was brilliant uh, he uh, he got in contact with them he signed the documents and then uh, he, and he sent them off. Uh, but it was so stressful because my um, flight was literally four weeks later. And uh, uh, they basically they waited. Um, well, this executive, whoever he was, he waited until I had uh, paid before getting involved. And I was so stressed. Um, and I got over to Japan. I had a great time and then when I came back I obviously filed a complaint and nothing and I, I filed uh, another letter to him again and nothing so I went over to London uh, where they had an office um, and I sat down in the, in the reception on medication strike um, demanding to see um, the biggest person in the building and I think it was a manager or an secretary who came down and Basically, they didn't know anything about it, um, and uh, they, they, were, they were apologetic, but they tried to cover it up by saying, well, at least she had a good holiday. <laughs> well, that's like uh, breaking somebody's arm and said, oh, well, at least you had um, a good treatment at the hospital. It was, a, it was annoying. It was so, so stressful, and I just could, I, I couldn't fly with them again. So I boycotted them for uh, around 10 years. <clears throat> Last year, I decided, right, I should get, get over this, try and uh, bury the hatchet. And I contacted, uh, well, I wrote to the president of All Nippon Airways, who passed it on to the, to the director of customer care, and uh, told him my intention the following year. I'm thinking about going to Japan. And I haven't exactly forgiven you yet, but we'll see how it goes. And the director of customer care um, wrote back, um, to his credit, he wrote back and uh, he was very apologetic about what, what had happened, but it's not his responsibility. So it was a fairly um, hollow apology. Um, and uh, uh, he told me that if I got in touch with the disability desk they would help me uh they would help me book my ticket because japan airlines who by the way are brilliant uh always helped me book my tickets so that i got the best best tickets um most appropriate tickets best price and uh, so i contacted the disability desk and very weirdly uh, the, well i told them uh, I've got a brain tumour, I find their website so difficult to use, uh, can you help me? Very weirdly, uh, they pointed me at the same website that I was looking at and they said, 
uh, if uh, we are the disability desk. If your inquiry isn't about a disability, then please uh, follow the following links. And basically, they didn't want to know. They didn't think I was disabled enough. So uh, uh, <laughs> that's when I had to uh, book my own ticket. And uh, you saw in the previous video that I rather flippantly did it. And uh, basically, I just don't know if I got the right ticket. But I, th I, I'm pretty sure I'm going to Japan, and I'm pretty sure I'll be going to Kumamoto eventually. So, but um, I, 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 well, I don't know. Hope, hopefully, 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 fingers crossed, um, touch wood, uh, everything's going to be okay, and I'm sure it will be. Next problem, <laughs> um, I would like assistance um, going uh, checking in and then going through security and passport control because it causes anxiety problems it's all connected to my um, condition also uh, something that happened in a, another airport a, a while ago and I'm at Stansted and at um, Gatwick they're very good they've got an assistance team uh, you just go up to the assistance team and ask uh, for help. They said no problem at all. They take me through and drop me off at the uh, uh, departure lounge where I'm able to do everything that I need to do. I contacted, um, well, I had a look at Heathrow, Heathrow's website and it said I had to contact my airline and do it through them. Give them the details and then they would get in touch with Heathrow to get everything set up uh, and uh, <laughs> well going, going back through all Nippon Airways I knew it wasn't going to work and finding the right um, email address or web form was a nightmare and I haven't heard anything from them so I went on to uh, social media and I, I'm I wrote out um, this, the story and a friend got in touch and um, he contacted a friend who knew a friend who worked at Heathrow, very long connection, and he got, got in touch with the appropriate people, probably because I eventually, I think it was yesterday, I got an email from somebody at Heathrow saying that uh, they've been in touch with the assistance team and they're waiting for a reply but I haven't had a reply back yet and I'm flying off tomorrow and disabled people are supposed to contact well supposed to ask for assistance one week in advance at least or at very minimum 48 hours before their flight so yeah <laughs> I, I I am pretty annoyed um, with all Nippon Airways for what they did to me in the past and what they seem to still be doing now. Um, but they have made improvements uh, according to their web website. Uh, but I I'm just at a bit of a loss. So, and I'm sure once I'm on the plane, I'm going to be fine. Everything's going to be ch uh, hunky dory. And uh, the surf service is going to be amazing. And even when I get to Japan, on that side, I'm not going to have any problems at all. Getting through security, finding my luggage, getting out. And it, my hotel is, um, the hotel room where I'm staying, is actually in the, uh, in the airport. So, well, it's very much fingers crossed at the moment. But for disabled people, it shouldn't be this hard. Okay, right, I'm at Heathrow Airport and Here's my luggage. Each one is 17 kilograms, which is really heavy. I'm at Terminal 2, and if you look behind me, it's very big. It's, it's called the Queen's Terminal. And frankly, I'm a bit lost, but I just find, I just find the elevator and go up. Okay, I got here. Uh, about 50 minutes before the booking desk opens sorry the check-in desk opens and this is the assistance area hardly anybody here at the moment obviously 
But yeah, I've got my got a nice place down and just need to wait for check-in to open then somebody will take me over to check in and go into departures hopefully okay well get, getting through uh, security and um, passport control is a bit more successful than I imagined but uh, I managed to get through and this is GT3 section I've already seen some things, some fragrances that I like but unfortunately I can't get it so I'm going to sell with some tea Ideally I'd like Countess Grey But I don't think they've got it I did some GT3 shopping and honestly it was a bit more stressful than I remember. I don't know, it's, well, it's been eight years since I last went to Japan. It's eight years since I last came through e forever. so maybe I'm just not used to it. But down here in Heathrow, We got standard W8 Smiths. Hmm, maybe I should get some hand sanitizer. Uh, pharmacy, which is a bit of a surprise. And uh, yeah, food and drink. I think it's an idea to get something to eat. Just a snack. Now I'm not going to get any anything to eat beforehand. Well anything substantial anyway. I'm not gonna drink um, any alcohol because I'm on medication and I'm not gonna drink anything while I'm uh, waiting for the plane because I don't want to be going to the toilet on the plane a lot. This is all a lot to think about and really just a bit too much Just want to say, this is for the cabin crew. Oh, nice if, no, no, please. Yeah. I'm, I'm so happy to go back to Japan at last. Uh, okay. Eight, eight years I had to wait. Oh my! Oh. Where's the seat? Okay, I will share a seat to you. Thank you. Oh, I saw you are too sweet. Okay, cross the side. So eight years. 
years ago, did you tell me around Japan or...? Uh, yes, I was. Um, but uh, this, this time I can't do it because uh, Japan Rail Pass is so expensive. Yeah, I know. Yeah, so... No. I think the Japanese yen is, you know, getting so weak. It, it's very weak at the yeah. moment, so... I can, I can go and visit my friends and stay with my friends. Okay. So, do you have any other problem during your stay in Japan? No, I'm just staying with my friends. <laughs> <laughs> so these ladies is going to work in economy class today. Uh, so I'm just talking okay. about you. So Japanese people in Japan will come to あ、先生、あれ。あ、それ、え。あ、それ、7G。オッケー。はい。サンキュー。あ、サンキュー。あ、サンキュー。あ、サンキュー。あ、サンキュー。あ、サンキュー。あ、サンキュー。あ、サン